In today's video we're going to be discussing the circulatory system which is one of the many functional systems in the human body. The circulatory system is responsible for the transport of blood and this is essential for providing oxygen and nutrients to cells, transporting hormones and signal proteins and removing waste products. We can divide the circulatory system into three components, blood, vessels and the heart. Blood consists of plasma, which is a yellowish liquid, and it has many cells suspended inside of it, the main one being red blood cells, which is what gives it its red colour. But there are also a lot of other cells like these. So the main thing that you need to know about blood is that it contains molecules and cells which are essential for the body's survival. At the same time, it also is used to remove waste products and transport them to different organs for their removal. They also contain white blood cells which are part of the immune system and are responsible for fighting off infections. So blood is basically just a transport medium for transporting all of these cells and molecules that the body requires and doesn't require. Blood is contained inside blood vessels and you can think of them as a network of tubes which transport the blood to different parts of the body. There are five main types of blood vessels. We have arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules and veins. So arteries eventually get smaller and form arterioles and they carry oxygenated blood. The blood that's contained inside the arteries and arterioles is at a much higher pressure because it just came from the heart. So the walls of arteries and arterioles are usually a bit thicker to help withstand the pressure. Next we have capillaries which have very thin walls, in fact they're only one cell in thickness and they allow easy passage of oxygen and nutrients from cells and at the same time they take away waste products from the cells like carbon dioxide. The reason that the capillary walls are just one cell thick is because it creates a shorter pathway for diffusion which means diffusion happens a lot faster. So if the wall is just one cell thick, the molecules which are being transported don't have to travel very far. So this means that certain molecules or gases like oxygen can transport across into the cell very quickly. And at the same time the waste products can also go into the capillaries and into the blood very quickly as well. We also have venules and veins which return blood back to the heart. They carry deoxygenated blood and the blood contained inside venules and veins is at a much lower pressure so they contain valves to prevent the backflow of blood. So blood can only go in one direction. An interesting fact is that venules and veins contain much darker blood because there is less oxygen inside it which gives the haemoglobin a darker pigment. Oxygenated blood which is inside arteries and arterioles is much brighter in colour because of the oxygen. The last component of the circulatory system which we're going to talk about today is the heart. The heart is a muscular organ which is the powerhouse for the transport of blood. It's made from cardiac muscle and it contracts due to electrical signals from pacemakers located here and here. This is the sinoatrial node and this is the atrioventricular node. The electrical signals from these pacemakers causes contraction of the heart muscle and forces blood out of